The truth is the FTX platform was very robust. It was very well designed. Hundreds of millions of dollars went into making that. And that's why there was sovereign interest and, and pension interest in the platform itself. Because at that time, just before the gates came down, you got to remember, all of these funds got gated, um, you know, towards the end of the week. And there they are sitting there. If somebody had provided the liquidity, and here's the interesting debate that was going on. Let me share this with you. So let's say your sovereign wealth fund, eight billions a rounding error for you. Do you really need eight billion? And, and let's say what was on the table in the deal was ownership of FTX, which was basically was on the table. So for for whatever the amount is to keep FTX liquid and compliant, you could own it. Uh, but we're not finished with the collateral damage. And so to your question, this is a bottoming process. An event like this is very important because it's finally going to have several impacts in areas that we need. It's going to accelerate regulation, number one. I'm, as we speak, I'm at the governor's conference in Orlando. This is topic number one in financial services. The amount of uh, discussion going on last night and certainly today about this situation is going to move um, it's definitely going to move legislation in the House. There's no question about that. This is a defining moment. But what we don't know is how many uh, other uh, you know, dominoes are going to fall yet. We need that to, to finish out. That's the kind of money that an institution or a sovereign wealth fund can put to work if they thought there was an interesting opportunity. And in financial services, illiquidity events or liquidity events like this can be interesting investment opportunities. If you think it's a legitimate investment and it's not going to issues with the regulator. So the timeline uh, of that conversation is I put a message into FTX. Um, I, I wanted to confirm the amount being requested. Was it going to be six or eight? Uh, Sam called me back. Very, uh, you know, standard conversation. He was, uh, you know, rational. And uh, we had that conversation about confirming what the amount was going to be. Um, the amount was $8 billion. That's what they were looking for. So um, I went back to these various entities that were asking me about it. And by that time, the SEC chair was on the air around the world. I think the network was CNBC. Compliant platform in the sense that we had an American running it, an American creating it. That gave some people some confidence, maybe ill-advised. However, Sam Bankman fried is an American. And he's well known and he is no question brilliant. I mean, when it comes to understanding blockchain and cryptocurrencies, very few people had his knowledge and his ability to build code around it. Remember, Serum is one of his projects as well. So he's well known in the community and a founder and for a while saving lots of other entities by putting cash into them. Where that cash came from is under question now, obviously. But the bigger question about this from the institutional perspective, and we're having this dialogue even today, is this does not kill crypto. This is one event that helps stabilize crypto. There's going to be a silver lining to this disaster. There's no question about it. It'll be called regulation. And I'll tell you why. It's not new regulation required here. You can look at any broker dealer exchange tied uh, in, in the US to stocks or bonds or futures or commodities and have regulations that are protecting investors in the US market. So it's not a big stretch to have the regulators finally say we're going to apply that but to crypto exchanges. What institution is going to put significant capital because I've had this conversation early this morning into any unregulated exchange i don't you don't even have to name names they're just not going to do it anymore and in fact what we're doing in our operating company is we're taking because fortunately we have other uh positions that are not that we're not in at ftx you you basically want to get as many apps on it as you can what gives value to ethereum or gives value to polygon is the fact that there are many many apps being developed on it even missed it, which is you know brand new coming out of the efforts of Evan Ch Chang, the Chung that's coming out of Facebook. Um, he got funded immediately because of the potential of how many applications could come on it. But very often what will happen, and Alameda was being uh, touted as this, you, you set up an institution that supports the development of a serum or supports the development of a polygon or supports Solana. And that was well um, accepted by many, many institutions, including all the institutions that you find on the roster at FTX. They understood that was what it was for. And indeed, if you look at what 
um, Alameda was investing in was to support the ecosphere. So for many investors, that didn't seem untoward. And that may be questioned in the future. But more importantly, it would be the relationship between the accounts at FTX and Alameda. That's what's being alleged. That's where it's offside. And that's never going to be legal in any situation unless you sign a contract allowing it. And he made it clear uh, that they were going to uh, come down hard on this situation. So the minute that occurred, that was the end of any sovereign wealth funds interest because they index in the S&P 500. They have to be compliant with the SEC. And so, you know, if you're if you're a sovereign wealth fund making a quarter of a billion dollars a day, the only market you can put it into um, to park it is the is the S&P. It's liquid enough to absorb that. So they don't make moves against U.S. regulators. And that was, I think, um, the last you know, I, I know that was the last time I talked to Sam. And then the other events unfolded, as you saw, there was no way to get that eight billion into or onto the balance sheet of of uh, FTX with the regulator hovering overhead.